Hello Internet, Rob from A Minor Error here again with yet another Strandberg related video. This is now guitar number five that I have reviewed. I'll put the little links and yada yada kind of sporadically throughout and in the description. This is going to be on a Prog 6. As always, Check the chapters down below to help you skip around to the area you're most interested in. I've got an original demo that I wrote for the guitar. Uh, we'll also talk about its features, the good, the bad, and then sort of conclusions and my overall thoughts. So let's get into it. So for my demo, the signal chain was as follows. I just kept the factory Diderio NYXL strings on it. They had plenty of life left when I got it. I was running a string source guitar cable, which I highly recommend, in straight into a Motu M2 interface. And then as always, using Neural DSP plugins for the leads, Archetype Pliny, and then for the rhythms, Nameless. So for a rundown on the features of this Prog 6, I've got it in the natural finish, which features a chambered swamp ash body with a maple top. It has a carbon fiber reinforced neck with an ebony fingerboard, 24 stainless steel frets, two Sir humbucker pickups, a nice simple old fashioned five way pickup selector switch, master tone, master volume, and then Strandberg's own hardware tremolo system. The pickups are Sir 
SSV plus in the bridge and an SSV in the neck and I think they sound absolutely incredible. These were the same pickups when I tested the Fusion about a year ago and I completely fell in love with them. They sound clear, they have loads of presence and the biggest thing that jumped out to me, especially with that bridge pickup is just the way any sort of palm muting just jumps out of the speakers. It just has this sort of really nice, aggressive, tight chunk kind of a tone, I'm just absolutely in love with these pickups. This guitar also is obviously a headless design. All Strandberg guitars right now are headless design guitars and features that very unique Endurneck. If you've never tried the Endurneck, you're not sure what it is, I did a video talking about those features. I'll do the little link and yada yada so you can go check that out. I happen to really like the Endurneck, but I understand it isn't necessarily for everyone. So you wanna be aware that the neck on all Strandberg gu guitars is very unique. It's it's very different from anything else out there. Okay, so let's talk about the good. The biggest thing about Strandberg guitars that I love about them is the ergonomics, how comfortable they are to play, both sitting and standing, especially with the standing. So they've installed the strap pins in a similar location as like, kind of like an old school Gibson SG. It's basically on the back of that upper horn, which kind of moves the guitar away from your body. It makes playing, especially in the upper frets, so unbelievably easy and comfortable. Because the guitar is headless, it has no neck dive whatsoever, and it basically is perfectly balanced even without your arms touching the guitar when you have it on a strap. For sitting down, because of the contour of the body, you can hold the guitar in different angles. It's also very comfortable if you like to do classical style with it on your left leg. The Strandberg hardware system is very accurate and pretty reliable as well, especially for a non-true double locking system. If you really abuse it, it will go slightly out of tune, but as far as like your average, you know, kind of playing and usage, it really stays locked in. It will flutter, although it's not the best fluttering system out there because the tremolo is fairly light. I found if you put the trem sort of facing back over the body and then hit the bar like that, it'll flutter a bit better than if you move it up over the strings in kind of more of a normal location. But overall, I really like the hardware. I mean, it's extremely well made, aluminum, it's definitely durable, and it's also designed so that you can replace the parts as they wear, which I greatly appreciate as well. The quality of the tone woods here is really undeniable. I just find the tone of this guitar to be absolutely incredible, both for leads and for rhythm and for cleans. Like I said earlier, that palm muting sort of chunk, it just jumps out of the speakers and it gets a little addictive. I think I kind of overdid it a bit with just wanting to palm mute everything like as much as I possibly could. The overall fit and finish of the guitar is pretty much perfect as well. There is one thing that we will talk about in the bad section coming up, but overall cosmetically perfect out of the box fit and finish absolutely immaculate as far as the neck connecting to the body, as far as how the tremolo is installed, all of the hardware just absolutely great right out of the box. I didn't even have to adjust the action or do anything to get it set up. It basically played great right out of the box, ready to go. So if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below about your opinion about this guitar. Helps my channel continue to grow and I really appreciate it. Here, a minor error is in fact not a Strandberg channel, but is the creative home for everything that I do musically, which happens to be apparently far too much Strandberg content. I'm an original progressive metal guitar player and I write and release my own music right here on my channel. I'll put the little links and yada yada. I'm about to be releasing a new EP called Cauldron of Stars and I would greatly appreciate it if you took the chance to go check it out. If you dug the demo track, you'll definitely like my actual music. It's in the same vein as the demo track. Here I do product reviews talking head tip videos, and music lessons. Those are the categories that I cover. So again, if you're liking it, like, subscribe, YouTube nonsense helps my channel continue to grow. Also, follow me on Instagram, Spotify, and Facebook. All the little links are down below in the description so you can check those out to all my social medias. On to the bad. 
There's really only two negatives about this guitar. I'll start with the smaller thing first because it's easier to get out the way. The Strandberg gig bag really isn't the greatest gig bag. It's a little disappointing if I'm honest. This is an area where a company like Kiesel is clearly a winner with their standard soft shell gig bag. So this standard gig bag really doesn't offer up much in the way of protection. In my opinion, it's not gig worthy. Uh, it, you're just really risking your instrument getting damaged. There's also this strange problem where the bottom of the cases aren't reinforced enough and usually the strap pin on the heel of the guitar kind of bottoms out and really hits the ground. Uh, this is a problem that I've had with every Strandberg case that I've had, which is now, I think I've had seven. <laughs> um, so, you know, I really wish that they would improve the quality of the case. The Kiesel standard soft shell gig bag has much better protection. It's clearly enough for you to be able to toss it in the back of a trailer and not be worried about your guitar getting damaged. Uh, I gigged with my Kiesel Vader for a while, never had a problem with that. I did buy the Deluxe gig bag for when I was gigging and playing my Strandberg guitars out, and that one offers much better protection, but it is the better part, I think, of $300, so that's kind of expensive. Uh, just, you know, really wish that the standard one was a little more robust like a Kiesel. And now for the biggest problem that I've run into two out of four Indonesian made Strandbergs is that the fret work on the edges is absolutely atrocious. So my Metal 8 and now this Prog 6 both have this problem of really, really sharp lips on literally each and every single fret. It's kind of confusing. The Classic and the Fusion that I tested, uh, my Korean made OS original that I still have didn't have this problem, but my metal, and now this one does. Each fret has a crazy sharp edge on it, and after playing for a little while, my index finger gets a whole bunch of little teeny kind of cuts in it. So this is clearly a problem that needs to be addressed. And I've spent a decent amount of debating what the issue is. I've heard some people suggest that since the guitars are made in a very high humidity climate like Indonesia, by the time they get to the States, I bought mine through Musician's Friend. Maybe Musician's Friend is storing them in a very overly dry warehouse that they're really drying the guitars out and that's what's causing this really, really aggressive fret sprout. I've owned my Metal 8 for over a year and I will tell you <laughs> the humidity has never made a difference. Nothing I did would make a difference. I had to have the frets actually filed to clean them up. Now I'm used to what regular fret sprout should feel like. My Kiesel Vader gets a little bit of it in the winter and so does my Ibanez J Custom RG7 CST. So I'm used to slight fret sprout. This is not slight fret sprout in my opinion. It's really, really sharp edges on each and every single fret especially if you kind of rub your finger up from the bottom, you can really feel this sharp stainless steel lip. So my unfortunate conclusions at this point is I just feel like the quality control isn't catching it, is honestly my opinion. I could totally be wrong. I mean, it might just be because it's going from that really humid climate to the states where it's just not as humid, especially, you know, it's March right now in Philadelphia and it's been very cold the last couple months. So that might be it, but it would clearly be something that you would need to get addressed if you buy a guitar that has this issue. It really is unplayable in its current state. And in my opinion, if you're spending over two grand on a guitar, it should be absolutely perfect right out of the box. And this is now two out of four that I've run into this problem. So should you consider buying a Strandberg Prague 6? This guitar has the playability and the tone and the durability with its hardware to last for years maintenance free. The tone out of these Sur pickups paired with the tone woods like is just totally to die for, especially for lead work, you know, just totally fall in love with all the little nuances and just how you can make this guitar sing or scream and just how well it plays in general. The Endurneck, in my opinion, is a total game changer. It's so much more comfortable to play on for extended periods of time. It does help keep your wrist straighter, which means that you're gonna 
potentially avoid injury and for bending because of those flat profiles, it makes bending so easy. You just have so much leverage over the strings. The headless design might not be for everybody. Occasionally I see a very negative comment on one of my videos pop up because people just think they look silly. And you know, that's fine. That's totally, you know, everyone's personal opinion about cosmetics is what it is. I happen to think they look kind of space age and super cool, but I get it's not for everybody. My biggest recommendation would be if you're buying one, make sure that you're potentially able to return it if you get one of those ones with bad frets. In my opinion, I just don't want to take it to a luthier and have somebody else have to fix something that should have happened from the factory to begin with. Again, I could totally be wrong. I mean, that might really be fret sprout. Just seems to me like those edges are sharper and bigger than they really should be if it was just fret sprout and humidity problems. 